Um, uh, we're extremely happy to have uh, Federico Aurora from Oslo. Um, at the moment, he's the uh, subject specialist in the University Library at Oslo. He's also completing a PhD in Classics there. And he's going to talk to us about a database of Mycenaean, which has been working on for a few years now, um, which um, I remember first hearing about a few years ago, and it sounded very exciting then. And I'm very much looking forward to hearing more about it now. Federico will tell us more about every aspect of that, from, from what Mycenaean texts are through to what a database often looks like. Thank you. Just take the time. So, good afternoon. So, uh, Yes, we're presenting Damos, database of Mycenaean at Oslo. Uh, I'll just start with a very, very short, uh, I mean, to refresh, uh, introduction to refresh um, uh, concepts about Mycenaean, which not everybody maybe needs all the time to be familiar with. So, uh, Mycenaean is mostly this. Uh, it's around 6,000 clay tablets. Uh, 5,000 and 600 of them are inscribed uh, and they come, well, the, I, we have to say that those, there's also around 200 vases which shorter with shorter inscriptions and they, this is the, the uh, time and place for Mycenaean. So, it's, as you probably know, the oldest attested uh, Greek dialect is also the second oldest attested in the European language after Hittite and we place it more or less between 1450 and then 1150. Uh, as you probably know, the biggest findings have been um, done uh, both uh, uh, in Crete and on mainland Greece. So uh, uh, the biggest archive is the one from Knossos, then we have Pylos, Thebes, Mycenae and Tiris. Um, the full, the, all, the, the, the full account of the tablet so long found are this. This is particularly interesting because there's new, uh, there's um, 100 new tablets which have been found near Sparta. So it's very interesting because it's new and then it's near Sparta. So they found, they discovered an entire Mycenaean palace. And of them, very few have been presented so long, so we, we don't know what's, what's inside them. So we're, <laughs> uh, we're very excited about uh, knowing about them. And it might happen soon. There's an important Mycenaeological colloquium in, in a month or so. Okay, so this is uh, to have an idea of the of the of how big our data are. Um, this is again just to remind you where to, to see to visualize where the the tablets of our Mycenaean documents come from. And this is uh, uh, just to remind you that of course Mycenaean is written in linear B. No, so it's a syllabic script. Uh, it could not be, of course, written in alphabetic Greek because it was not. It, it had not been invented yet. Um, this is a drawing, and it, it, it's a it's a good thing to use a drawing rather than the table from before because you see better the the signs. Um, so these are this is linear B. These are the basic signs. There are some other signs, but these are the basic ones. They're the most used ones. And uh, so, it's a, as I said, it's a syllabary, syllabic script. So there's a, there's a sign for every combination of consonant and vowel. Um, mm, linear B is not a very good... Well, it worked very well as an administrative... Uh, I mean, as the script of, uh, for the administration, as a writing system for the administration of uh, the Mycenaean palaces. But uh, it doesn't work very well for uh, rendering the, the, the uh, ancient Greek uh, phonology and then also morphology. I just sum up some, some of the main uh, shortcomings which makes working with Mycenaean quite challenging. Um, so, as you can see, um, you might have noticed here that there's no signs for, for consonant clusters. And um, there's no, well, we, we see, there's, there's quite, I mean, there's less combinations of consonants and vowels than we would expect. And this is because um, there are especially two features which make Mycenaean difficult to, um, to be read. First, uh, this is the first feature. So for, um, for certain consonants, there's only, on, only one 
uh, a series of signs. So there's no difference in the script for R and L, but we know that there were R's and L's. Uh, there's no difference for um, between voiceless and voiced consonants. So same sound, same same um, signs for uh, K, for K, G, and K. The same goes for P, B, P. While for um, for dentals, we do have a special sign for the D series. That is da, de, di, do, do. Okay. So this 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 feature gives this kind of ambiguities. Uh, this sign, which is the sign which we conventionally transcribe with ka, can stand for ka, ga, ka, and then same holds for pa, ba, pa, ra, la. The other feature is that uh, the only uh, syllable structure which is supported by the script is open syllables. That means a combination of a consonant and a vowel or a vowel. That means, well, this contrasts with uh, the structure of Mycenaean, which uh, is not different from, particularly different from the one of uh, classical Greek. So that means many uh, consonant clusters and uh, closed uh, syllables. No? Uh, if we think, for example, at the endings, which is very relevant for us, uh, if we think of the endings, um, ending with a consonant, like sigma or a mu. So uh, the result is this: this sign k, uh, uh, conventionally transcribed k, can actually stand for k, but also ska, scan, skal, kal, k. And if we combine these two features, we get this, all these combinations. And this is just an example of all the possible combination. So this sign, in, inside of a word, can 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 render all these. Uh, combinations of sounds. This is what uh, makes Mycenaean difficult to 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 decipher, uh, to to read. Hmm? It's difficult to understand which linguistic reality is behind uh, the linear B signs. So, and, uh, to to conclude about this, uh, with an example, this uh, the sign the signs pa and te are transcribed pa te. And we know in some tables that they stand for the word pate, father. No. But they could, in principle, also be all of these combinations, it's a bit complicated, with giving these possible inter Greek interpretations. Well, more than the, this, these ones that I. But uh, the only one, that, the only other one which actually uh, we find in the Mycenaean documents, in only one template, if I'm not wrong, is pantes. Mm, so, all. So this introduction is to uh, is to well uh, is to explain uh, why it's a bit uh, giving you the of course the background for Mycenaean but also the background for why uh, to build a database why why uh, to have a corpus linguistics approach to the study of Mycenaean this is just um, to conclude about Mycenaean so here you can see the passages this is the linear B this is the transcription which we use in the database, which is more or less the same as in the standard editions, so the, the conventional transcription. Here you can see the supposed phonological reality of Mycenaean. This is one of the most exciting tablets. There's a, something like a king or something, a wanax. Um, um, uh, and this is the English translation. So. Uh, this, uh, these ambigu ambiguities and this uncertainty have, have left many questions open. Like, for example, uh, I will now quote something which is particularly interesting for me and it was the catalyst for starting uh, working with the database. For example, we don't know yet, we can't be sure yet about the cases of my senior. Is it, is it um, how many cases did it have? We don't know, it, it, was it more near to the one of Proto-Indo-European uh, uh, or more near to the one of Ancient Greek? Did we have seven, six or five cases? Hmm? And we don't, we're not completely sure either, I mean, everything holds together, so we, we're, we can't be completely sure about the syntax of those cases before we, we decide how many they are and so on. So another open question, which is particularly interesting for me, is to uh, detect uh, or uh, 
better describe traces of possible diachronic and geographical variation in Mycenaean, which has been a highly debated question uh, in Mycenology throughout, uh, since the decipherment in 1952. Um, so these are not the only open questions, but these are, these are examples of what interests me as, as a linguist, particularly. Um, so I think that uh, a corpus, corpus linguistics approach, uh, uh, building a database of Mycenaean, allows us to, 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 um, to behave with Mycenaean as William Lovell says historical linguistics should be, that is, the art of making the best use of bad, uh, the, the best use of bad data. So, as we, as we have seen, Mycenaean data are quite bad, and I, I'm describing to you my way to do a best, the best use of them. Um, so, why the notator corpus? Now I will explain it better, because you can, one through that can enrich the data and store them uh, in a database. And very important, then you can, this enriched data can be crossed through complex queries, through the interrogation of database. So previous hypotheses can be tested, and both previous hypotheses and new hypotheses can easily be uh, replicated. Mm. So uh, I would say that uh, a database, an annotated database or a corpus of Mycenaean can be seen as a good quantitative basis, base, base and I'm not sure about the English word, for uh, qualitative work. Mm. Because at the end of the day, it's qualitative work, what we need to do with these like close reading and so on, uh, we need to do with Mycenaean. But uh, I think it's important to have a good quantitative basis before. So I will say something now about how we build uh, the corpus. Um, I have I, I I I like here to um, to say uh, to talk about the people which helped me build in this corpus. So I've been uh, working with the mycenological part, but the IT part has been done taken care of at the um, with, by the IT IT group at the universe at the faculty of humanities of the University of Oslo. So Asker Nesson, David Nevich, and Heidi Lurken. And Andrea Bersi has revised, uh, I mean, proofread the, the, the word files that have been imported. So without them, I, I couldn't have done this, this database, of course. Um, the first thing one has to do in this case is to scan uh, the, the, um, the, the text from paper editions. We were lucky enough, and here I have to thank again uh, the people at Titus, because they, they, they saved us very much work. Uh, I think 90% of, of, the, of the text we got from them already uh, and either uh, scanned or keyboarded by, 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 by people at Titus. So we, we could start directly from Word files, Microsoft Word files, and then we had to scan 10% uh, of them. So it was much work in a way also because we had to, uh, to fix a bit this, this uh, text, but it was, was very helpful. So this is how a, a standard edition uh, looks like, and that's what, in this case, it, these are the, the, the tables from Thebes, which were find, found in the 90s, so they're quite fresh, and that's what I had to scan. And it goes without saying there's no OCR for Mycenaean. So, Sometimes you don't know what's fastest, to scan and correct or just enter the data with a keyboard. Yeah. Um, then, uh, I think an important part of, of, of uh, my work has been to update the text. Because uh, for many, uh, many texts, the standard editions uh, were now quite updated, especially uh, the text from Pilots. So I had to, in some cases, to uh, how do they become outdated? Because uh, there are some new findings, for example, the tables from, from themes, but for them we have a new edition. Uh, but the problem is, uh, are the joins. There are many, many people work with, uh, with the, 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 the fragments and then fi find out that some, some, some uh, Fragments of tables they hold together, they, they they go together, and so we have new texts uh, or two texts put together with the possibility of new readings and so on. So and this 
this, uh, the joins and the new readings were scattered around in, 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 um, in many contributions, in many articles, uh, and it was not a completely easy task to, to update, the, update the, the text. But, what, but the result is that now what's online is the, is the most updated uh, Mycenaean text one can find. And they are uh, constantly updated, so I, I update them with new findings or new readings, new joints as soon as they are published. So, after that, uh, I come to the more digital part. I imported them into an SQL database through, through a program. Uh, that means that we had to make the documents, these Word files, machine readable. That means unambiguous. Um, as you as you have seen, Mycenaean. I mean, this is how Mycenaean texts uh, look like in a, in a Word file, which is more or less like in a, in a standard edition. But uh, you might not. Well, actually, this is a quite a bad example because um, there's not so many um, many many signs from the Leiden Convention. But Mycenaean texts are published uh, using. Uh, the wing spread convention, which is the Mycenaean version, slightly modified version of the wing spread uh, of the Leiden Convention. So, what we what we did uh, while importing them into an SQL database was to import the text, but automatically also import all the all the uh, properties that these words, that the, the epigraphical words have, and which are. Um, which are usually um, accounted for by the, the, the Leiden Convention, the epigraphical conventions. That means that those things, those data, are uh, searchable and, and then they can be crossed with other data. This is, this is what one usually does with, uh, uh, with for example, in, in other contexts like in papyrology, uh, uh, what one is doing with, um, with, the, with the epidoc. But uh, when I started doing this, I didn't use, uh, I didn't think of using TEI or Epidoc simply because I didn't know about it. But it turned out for the Mycenaean material to be maybe, I would say, a better choice to, to store the data in a relational database instead of. But uh, I actually hope that, uh, and, and it should be doable, to be able to convert, convert everything into XML files so that they, they can be exchanged. Um, so, this is a PHP program, that's how the computer read uh, our text, and the result, the first result, uh, of what we had was an epigraphically annotated corpus. So, after the import, um, after the, the import into the relational database, what we had is um, all text, lines, words, syllabograms, of Mycenaean stored in tables into a relational database and connected to them where uh, was all the epigraphical and metadata information which is stored in standard edition through the Leiden Convention. So this is uh, again a bit of some numbers just to give you an idea of, of the dimensions of the, of the corpus. It's of course compared to modern languages corpora or even to TLG or PES, it's a very small corpus. But uh, also this shows you that uh, texts have been stored on multiple levels. So they have been stored as texts, they have been stored as lines, as words, as syllables. So one can look, can, can, um, uh, um, while searching database, one can search for certain kind of syllables, certain kind of words, um, and certain kind of lines, certain kind of words within certain kind of lines. This is an um, this is an example of just an example because the 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 the, the, the features one can look for are are, are more than this. Check the time. So. Uh, this is an example of what, what, what one can look for. Uh, so one can look for the database for uh, syllables of uncertain reading, if syllables have been, if they are conjectures or, or not, 
or they are, or they are part of the text, uh, if any syllable is being uh, is being uh, erased, and so on. The same thing goes for for words. One can already look for the di all the different kinds of, of logograms. So by, by searching one of these one of these categories, one would then get the, the computer would return all the, the logograms which are of this type. Um, yeah. So and then we added more metadata which is in, which is again crucial with uh, for Mycenaean. Some of it is already encoded in standard editions, some we entered manually. Uh, for example, provenience for inscribed vases or the chronology uh, for the tablets and so on. Then we come to the second stage. Uh, because, so, uh, up to then, then when we, after importing the data, we had an epigraphical annotated corpus. Then we wanted to have a linguistically annotated corpus. This meant uh, creating an annotation interface and routines to be a bit efficient. And this, uh, I, I will go through this, but this we did through two programs, one proprietary and one not. Uh, so Microsoft Access and MySQL Workbench. Uh, then we are annotating the text. I say we, but it's me. <laughs> it's like this. We in the project, but I am annotating the text, the, uh, which is a work in progress still. And then we had to create an interface for internet publication. Uh, I will now, before talking more about the linguistic annotation uh, of the text, uh, go quickly through uh, the, um, the internet publication, which is online at the moment, to present it a bit. Um, so this is how it looks like. The functionality is quite limited at the moment. Well, I would say limited compared to what I have in the database. At the moment, there's uh, mostly two functions a tablet search function and a word search function. Um, through the tablet search, one can look for a given tablet, I mean, a given document, I mean, also basis, or a, a group, a subgroup of documents, let's say all the documents from Thebes, or all the documents from Thebes in, the, in, in a given series. So one can cross these criteria. So one can look for um, uh, tablets written by a certain writer and this is a, a first, uh, how would you say, um, a concordance so these are all the tablets which have disappeared which have been joined so if one is reading all the literature and doesn't find where this tablet is now one can look here in this list and they are all there so you want it. this is how it looks like when you get uh, a table, this is from Knossos there are some notes which are which are actually are mostly taken from 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 the apparati and also uh, here I, I put my uh, updating so all the reference for my updating the notes are a bit uh, a problem because it's the only part which is not open access meaning that in order to have access to the notes you have to send me send an email to me and then I will create an account uh, this is done because of I, 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 I fear some problems with copyright all the rest is open access. So you can see here some metadata. Yeah, also a first map. But this is, at the moment, the map functionality is quite limited. You, you can only see where this tablet is, I mean, in Knossos. Um, this is the word search uh, screen. Uh, you can see you, see, you can do a bit complicated word searches both in normalized and non-normalized form and you can, uh, one, this is I think it's important, one can use regular expressions so one can have, can perform quite complex searches if one can use regular expressions um, some, and some other functionality of, of the current uh, online version so one can open uh, all the tablets one, one looks for in, in, uh, in pop-up windows so that, that one can compare them and so on. Um, yes, as I said, these are my remarks about where I have updated uh, the, the tablets from. And this, I think, it's quite useful. You can see in bold, 
It's everything which is new compared to standard editions, which is actually something we, uh, which people haven't done so long in my synology because when a new standard edition comes, comes out, you don't know where the news are. So uh, you have to look for text and compare them with, with, with previous text, which is what made my, my work of updating quite, quite uh, difficult. So in, in a further step, one can also look for changes, but uh, not at the moment. So, uh, as I said, the, the, the final, the ultimate goal is to make available for complex searches all the data which are in the database. Mm -hmm. Which are many more now, we will see a bit which, which data, which more data are in the database which are not accessible online. So, about the linguistic annotation. Um, the linguistic annotation is very rich. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure I will manage to do it all myself, but what, what is important is the database has an architecture, uh, it's been designed in such a way to be expandable and, and to, I mean, I say, we created a lot of categories and tables which are now empty, but can be annotated in the future. Uh, so, ideally, um, through, through these two programs, which we will see quickly soon, uh, what, have, what we have done is some standard procedures in <laughs> databases, so we had lemmatized and normalized. Uh, the, normali the, the first normalizations, normalization, which we will see in the next slide, has been done automatically, then the rest has been entered manually. And you see, it's quite, uh, quite many data for, for each for each word, um, part of speech, other morphological data, uh, syntax. Uh, at this moment, um, I'm focusing on case syntax. So I, I'm annotating the functions of, of the cases. This is an example of a normalized uh, of the, all the normalization and. Uh, lexical layers we have for one word. Uh, this is how, this is, I took the, 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 the word that gives the, the, the name to the database, so damos, village or people, or community, better. So this is how this word, uh, how we find this word in, in, our, that in, uh, in our text. So it's damo plus the enclitic de, the conjunction de, later with de. Uh, the first normalization gets rid of the, of the um, epigraphical signs. Second normalization uh, divides the two uh, lexical units. Then we have a third normalization which also, well, I, I can skip this, it's a bit technical. Then we have a, a Mycenaean phonological form, then Mycenaean lemma, Attic form, Attic lemma, and dialectal form if there is one. I actually not sure if <laughs> this is attested, but that's how it would be in Doric and the Indo-European root. Mm. So in the end, for example, one could, this is, I think, quite, quite important because the Mycenaean material is, I think, underused by, by historians, epigraphists, at least that's what they tell me, uh, because they cannot look for, okay, I want to see how demos uh, is in Mycenaean, that you can't do, and so on, to see if that, is there that word in Mycenaean, and you can't do it at the moment. Well, of course you can do it, but then, you have to go through uh, diction uh, two or three dictionaries and, and publications. And for example, look for all in the European roots present in my city. So again, this is another slide about the, the, uh, the morphological annotation, but I already talked about it. This is um, how... Just check the time. This is, um, I was talking about annotation strategies and, and um, routines. So for the annotation, we developed two strategies. One is using this, this program, Microsoft Access. And it's, uh, so there's an annotation scheme for every word. And this is useful to annotate word by word going from tablet to tablet. Because you get all the data gathered 
uh, all the data which are otherwise scattered in tables in the relational database are gathered here for, for, for the annotator. And then the annotator can enter the relevant um, values. This is the other interface, uh, the other program which we use uh, to work with the database. I will say afterwards that we, that's what I use mostly for data retrieval, but also and, and to change the structure of the database. But uh, I've also been using it for uh, what I would say we call semi-automatic annotation, and it is really making good use of bad data because um, my senior has one feature, and it is that some of the words are repeated many, many times, and uh, they always have the same form. So. What I, uh, what I can do with this program is to, through a query which is less complex than it seems, I can, I can then annotate all these words, like uh, which in, in, in transcription read ECOTE, as, as the participle ECONTES. ECONTES in classical Greek, in my senior probably had still spiritus aspers. ECONTES, probably. Okay, so. I've been using both these strategies, mm, like massive annotation of, of, of the same word through, through this interface or annotation word by word through this interface. Uh, we also have a little device in this, in this uh, interface which allows us to, uh, I mean the computer recognizes words which have been annotated before so that I can just say yes, I want, I mean, I want this value for this word just annotated as you annotated before. So this is a way also to uh, the computer recognizes the same Mycenaean form, asks me which of the two values which are recorded at the moment I want to insert and then I can choose. Um, but this is I think one of the most uh, relevant features of, uh, of Damos. What happens? What happens when uh, we have a case like this? like this uh, Mycenaean word, where f at least five possible uh, interpretations are possible, mm, are, are, are thinkable, and one of them even implies two words. Mm. So, uh, then the I, I, I thought of the architecture of, of this database as allowing for competing analysis. Mm. Um, because of the reasons I said before, uh, the Mycenaean, I mean, interpretation are, are dependent on, on intertextual comparison and on nets of hypotheses, which can change with time. At least ideally, all the possible interpretations given for a certain word, and then in future decide maybe that what seemed less probable three years ago, now it seems more probable because of new findings and so on. But of course, this kind of complexity which um, needs to be organized some way, otherwise it's not particularly useful. So uh, I devised these two systems, which is, I mean, this system, it is, uh, and it is to rank the analysis entered in the database according to two criteria, at least at the moment, the research community's consensus and the researcher's preference, at the moment mine. Um, so, consensus can be defined as the grade of certainty and agreement about a certain analysis found in the scholar literature. With my senior, I pr what I do is actually that I mostly refer to Dictionary Mythenico, which is the standard dictionary, where this kind of information is, uh, is present, how plausible and how, um, how shared uh, interpretations are. Um, where I, I take this information from somewhere else I indicate it in the database. Um, so, then I have built a scale, mm, which goes from 0 to 3, to uh, evaluate the consensus. So, one can also look for, I only want to see my senior words for which there is a wide consensus. I'm not interested in tentative uh, hypothesis and so on. Uh, of course, there can be many hypotheses which, uh, which, uh, uh, which are very uncertain. So in this case, there are parallel, uh, very uncertain hypotheses, and they are coded in this way with, uh, with letters. Um, rank is, uh, 
in this moment my personal preference. But uh, the, the, what we wish to do is that people are able to create their own accounts and then enter their own uh, preferred ranking. But this is in the future, it's not possible yet. Uh, so here you can see an example of this word. You see, these are the, the interpretations entered according to the different rankings, the consensus, sorry. And uh, here you can see, so I had to use small letters because as you see, as you, as, uh, you have seen, there's cases in which one word is actually two words in a given hypothesis. So in this way, I called uh, a, a word, I mean two parts, <coughs> two words of the same, going back to the same hypothesis, which, uh, with small capitals. Mm. Uh, small, sorry, small letters, while capitals refer to parallel, uh, equally probable hypotheses. Okay, so some numbers about the progress of the annotation. Uh, these are a bit old, so I, I progressed a bit more, and I think I will be a bit faster recently. I, I devised a way to automatize a bit more the annotation. Uh, some numbers again uh, the ver uh, of what I have annotated so long. Mm, the verbs are actually all the Mycenaean verbs. So this is the numbers about Mycenaean verbs. They, they, they are not definitive numbers because some forms are disputed. Mm. And then I will, I think that the last part now, I will quickly um, talk a bit more about uh, organi the organization of complexity, which is what I just talked about before, but actually uh, the data are a bit more complex than that, and I think that with digital uh, resources what we can do is to give a better account of the complexity of data because, of we, because we have less uh, physical constraint. So, uh, so it, uh, I'm going to talk about managing not only different linguistics, linguistic analysis, but also different linguistic, different readings of a word. And this can be, uh, especially this, I think, can be an interesting, both of them, especially different readings, can be interesting uh, also uh, in terms of common challenges with also papyrology and, and, and uh, epigraphy. So, well, maybe I should. I don't know. This is the structure of the database. You don't need to read uh, uh, which what the uh, tables are, but this, this is just to, to show you that uh, there is one part of the database which uh, is meant to describe the epigraphic reality. This is the linguistic reality, and this is what connects them, which is the main uh, table of the database, the one referring to the single words. So this is just to say that. The database is thought in two dimensions, the epigraphic reality, physical reality, and its interpretation. So, let's say some, let's, let's, I, I, I'll uh, show this with an example. So, we can have an, a, a tablet with this, which, which contains this word, hmm? uh, the occurrence in the database is coded with a number, so this reading refers to a number in a table. And this is its linguistic interpretation, korwa, hmm? the Greek, the, the Mycenaean form for the classical Greek, ati, kore. Okay? But actually, I'm sorry, this is not the only possible interpretation. As I said, Mycenaean is highly ambiguous. It could be also korwa, kore, the, the accusative. And it could actually be many other things, I mean, many other cases of this word. and. But uh, just for the, the, the sake of the example, I limit the analysis to these two occurrences. But what happens if we add another possible reading? Because sometimes uh, paleographies, uh, I mean, epigraphies are not sure about, uh, you see now, you see here that the late convention signs say, ah, we are not sure about this sign. It might actually be wo. This is an invented example. But if it was war, then, I mean, the occurrence is unique, but it can be read in two different ways. And these two different ways, mm, sorry, 
give them, uh, th then they give more interpretation because then this could be uh, corvos, no? Coros, classical coros. So uh, in this way, then we also have to enter the database that we have two readings and at least three analyses. One of them is connected to one reading, the other one are connected to two other readings. So what I'm doing at the moment is trying to, to devise a system to deal with, uh, and I think I, I managed more or less to devise a system to deal with this uh, kind of complexity. And I think this can be an interesting question also for epigraphy and, and, and papyrology. Even though uncertainty is less uh, spread than in, in Mycenaean, with a Mycenaean text. So, that's what I, what, I, what I say. I just want to add that this could lead, to, lead, uh, lead us to think and wonder how dynamic should um, or could online editions be. Uh, I'm also thinking of digital editions of, of literature, for example. Because if we start um, entering all the possible readings, all the variants of the manuscripts and so on, then the way is actually open for very dynamic editions. I mean, where, at least hypothetically, one can think that every user can create mm, her own uh, edition or something like that. Mm. And I think the Mycenaean corpus is an interesting uh, corpus that can be used like a prototype, because the material is quite limited, mm. so even though complexity is, it, it, yeah, it, it's a bit um, ambiguous, it's a bit everywhere, the, the material is small, and uh, it's worth doing it because this ambiguity is, is, I mean, to resolve this ambiguity is fundamental to understand the text. Um, I just want to point out that this kind of structure that I, 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 that I just showed, uh, it's been made possible by using a, a relational database and by its key feature, which is modularity. That means that I can add as many annotations as I want. I just can. I just need to create a new table, and I enter new annotations, and I can easily restructure it as I did, like uh, now allowing also for different readings. And it, 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 should, it can be interesting to to think about uh, the choice of technology for relational databases, not necessarily versus, but end XML and so on. Um, some words about data retrieval, uh, because uh, which is something which I can do now on my on my interface, but it's not possible in, in this uh, um, in this way yet in this complex way in, in on um, online. Just some examples of what one can do with this kind of data. For example, uh, by using this interface, I can extract a list of uh, which writers, which writer uses which preposition, for example, and that means also in which time, which in which chronological moment, which prepositions are used. Uh, this is another example. These are quite simple examples. Um, this is the alternation of the preposition ep against the va variant versus the variant op in in Pyros. So you can see the writer which preposition he is using and which in which table. Uh, another example of what I can one can do already at the moment where data are not completely annotated. For example, I can uh, look for the co occurrence of the instrumental plurals in P, hmm? Homeric later Homeric P corresponding more or less to that. And uh, they are co-occurrence co with other cases. They are not yet annotated, but I can, um, by, by querying for, for a certain vowel in the ending, one can already have some preliminary data. And this is important to, for questions like agreement between cases in my senior. Because sometimes cases ending in P seem to agree with cases not ending in P, which is this. Uh, this is the full amount of data. 
Mm. Or the last example is the distribution. Uh, one can get a picture already now, the distribution of the third declension instrumental plural, which I was talking about before, in P, uh, in space and time. So this is the AGN chronology. This is where, in, my, in the Mycenaean word, it's been used. And these are frequency and occurrence. This doesn't tell us not so much yet, but it can be a good basis for, for, for them quantitative work. It can give uh, ideas for, for hypotheses and, and like, uh, solid ground for hypotheses. The last example, which syllabograms are most frequently used as logograms, for example. So the, the, this is to show that it can be inter interesting also for, uh, not only for linguists, but also for, for uh, uh, paleographers. Okay, uh, future development. I would like to expand even more the annotation, of course, and I would like to annotate also the, the supposed phonological reality of Mycenaean. And alternate readings, I'm, I'm doing it at the moment. And of course, yes, I really would like to have the, the possibility to have a, the users to perform complete data retrievals online. Uh, even better if they had their own interface and they could have their own account. And, and uh, this is only an idea, but it might be become possible in the near future. I would like to plot the linguistic data on maps uh, so that uh, one could have some kind of Mycenaean linguistic atlas. Mm. This is just a, a, an idea. Uh, of course, it would be very nice to, uh, to link this data to other uh, existing already online or half online, like the Dictionary Mechanico data. Uh, the Dictionary Mechanico is going to be online in the future, but the, the index is already online. Uh, this is probably going to happen very soon, the, 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 to link the data to the corpus of my known MSNCs in Heidelberg. And then I think it would be very useful also to, since Mycenaean contains very many personal names, to, to link these names to their, their later forms in the lexicon of Greek personal names. Uh, I'm, uh, just to, before closing, I think it's I don't know, honest to uh, mention two other resources which are, have been uh, created about Mycenaean and which are similar to Damos, even though they don't have any, any, any lexical, uh, any, any linguistic annotation. One is uh, uh, the work of, of Maurizio del Freo in uh, La Sapienza in Rome. They have, uh, what is very good with this project is that they have pictures. I don't have pictures. Uh, they have pictures taken from standard editions, but I think in the near future, it would be uh, hospitable to, to link the, the two databases uh, or to other picture databases. And then I also want to mention uh, the website of Kim Raymond, which was the first database which was online uh, with linear B tablets, which is also a bit different, it's not updated, but it, it's very practical and it has some links to the meanings of the words, which, which is now present already in my data. So, uh, I will, if any of you is using uh, Damos, I would be very happy to get some feedback. Uh, first, if you have any urgent queries that are not available online, yes, please write to me, I can, I can, I can, I can do that for you. And then if you encounter technical problems, you have suggestions, if you find mistakes, please let me know. And if you're interested in collaborating by linking this um, resource to other resources, like the ones I mentioned before, you're of course very welcome. And then I have to thank you, Marcinian. It should sound like uh, uh, Kari, you mean Heiko, something like that. Thank you very much. That was, uh extremely informative race through from all sorts of aspects of the, the language. And for those of us who don't have a background in Mycenaean, the bit at the beginning that you apologize for was actually very, very useful. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments on this? Sure. Uh, 
Um, hi. So, firstly, I'm very sorry I came in late. I was um, stuck in the transport system. Um, so, this question may have been answered already, so uh, my own apology. Um, those last examples you gave, which were kind of focused on the linguistic and paleographical structure of Mycenae, I was very interested in that kind of chronological tracing you were able to make. Um, is it that aspect or the aspect of linking Mycenaean to kind of classical Greek words the main sort of objective of this database which which is more sort of important? I wouldn't say it's a main objective but it's, I, I, I became uh, conscious that it's an important objective. I, I was in a workshop recently where there was an epigraphist asking me things. Where, do you have that? Do you have that in Mycenaean? And, uh, I had the impression, and I got this feedback also from other other people, that that this Mycenaean data are not so 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 easy to access for non-specialists. So one of, I mean, through this probably you saw this this slide with the normalization. You, I, I guess you saw it probably. So this would be one way. That, um, I didn't mention it, or I didn't emphasize it, but I I'm, I will try to put in translation in English at least for the first time, so that people can look for, for I don't know, uh, the, uh, one word in translation, they don't need to know the Mycenaean form, they don't even need to know the, the Greek form, and they can find what. Um, of course, the best would be to link it to uh, some kind of ontology, so that if you look for a table, there's no tables, but then maybe there's a chair or something, so that's, yeah, to make it accessible, I don't know if this, but I mean, the, the catalyst at the beginning of the project was a, a linguistic analysis of, of Mycenaean. Then I realized that it would be. Yeah. I guess my follow up question is would it work for linear A? Uh, yeah, the first part of it would work. I mean, the, fir uh, or, um, the same uh, PHP script that we used to import data. The, the linear B data into the database could be used for linear A with slight modifications. So in this way, you would have an epigraphical annotated database of linear A quite easily. And then you can, you can, of course, then you need to think even more about complexity and managing different. But yes, I think this 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 um, this way of 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 organizing complexity could work well. Could easily monopolize the rest of the question yeah. time, but I won't. There'd be much less interpretation and linguistic analysis on the linear. There'd be much less interpretation and linguistic analysis on the linear A, I presume. Yeah, but but maybe on on, on the linguistic. Yeah, but uh, I mean the, the hypothesis they can. Well, I'm not. I know very no, little of linear A, so I'm, I'm not going to say things I don't know. But uh, I mean, there's going to be many yeah. hypotheses there also that can be yes. tested. Sure. Maybe we can talk more after. The, the terrific map you had at the beginning <coughs> of the whole area in which this was going on. Um, and, and then you've got, uh, when you, you're dealing with your material, you said there were ambiguities in that. Can you trace back the, I mean, this is good sound, really dark, but can you trace back the ambiguities in the material from the attempt to write something which was heard and the, was, uh, the, what was heard in different places would sound differently because it was a different accent or a different. Well, I mean, this is one of the hypothesis of the hypotheses. Uh, I mean, the, the question is, what were the scribes doing? Were they using? Uh, were they transcribing some kind of spoken language that they had, even if maybe formal, maybe high, uh, some kind of standard language, or were it was it only a written language? So, yes, of course. The, I mean, what I'm trying to to spot or to spot, um, people have noticed that um, that in different areas or that there is some uh, there is some variation in Mycenaean but it's not clear if it's dependent on, on, on geographical matters or uh, social linguistic and I think even though the data are quite scanty I think this kind of organization can produce a bit more solid uh, hypothesis which could be then geographical variation also what about time you had quite a 400 years, I think, or more. Yeah, it. yeah. You seem to have variations in time. Yeah, uh, the point is that one sees variations, but uh, it's not clear yet 
if it's time or not. Also, uh, the point is that, um, mm, okay, uh, first, uh, these differentiations in the chronology, the chronologies of the different sites and of different parts of the archives within the sites are a bit new, meaning that uh, they have been acknowledged more recently. So it's a bit more recent that people have started thinking of diachrony within, within the Mycenaean, I mean more, more radically within the Mycenaean language. Are you very confident of the attributions of time now? Is that Good question. Um, I have different chronologies also. That's okay. also so I can have chronology one, two, three, so that one can play because of, there's no consensus about the chronology at the moment. Um, so you said um, early on that you didn't encode this in Epidoc, um, and you thought it was actually. For your purposes, it worked better to, in the in the database. On, I, on the one hand, I, I ought to be disapproving at this point um, and say, you know, that, that Epidoc would um, would of course be valuable, but I, I, I'm never interested in doing that. Um, but you you, um, you said you were hoping that, and you thought it would be quite possible to do some automatic parsing that would generate Epidoc from that. I wondered if you had a sense of how easy, or maybe more how effective that parsing and that conversion would be. And second part to that question, in what ways doing that would then be useful to you or to anyone? Uh, to me, I start with the second part. Okay. Uh, it would be useful to, well, to share data. So if somebody wants to beat the different database of my CNE and so on, yeah. then I, I would be happy to give, give away all the data. Yeah. And then they can read it in XML and so on. Uh, of course, I can give it also in, in, in Excel. Cheats, I don't know, but um, remind me of the first part of your question. Uh, how much, how much of the information that you would want to encode in TIXML would you be able to automatically parse out of your database structure? The point is that uh, I think one has to write a program to do that. Uh, probably a PHP program. So depending on the patience of the of the programmer. But I, I uh, then then I would have probably a question to a question to you. And I, I wonder how how big part of it can be stored fruitfully. Yes. If there, I, I don't really know if there's any limit to 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 Epidoc uh, or any TEI uh, solution for for my team. Yes. The limit the limits I guess would be the limit of complexity. As you say, you have multiple layers of annotation, which is quite hard to do. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and well, you know, there are solutions to that sort of thing, including standoff markup and, and embedding, you know, multiple annotations in, in attributes and various other ways. Um, there comes a point that it's. I think I think it's probably true as you as you began by saying that you're recording this in a better way in your database already. So, you know, sort of trying to corrupt your data to fit it into an XML format would be sort of counterproductive at that point. I, I would sorry. I, I wouldn't convert them for my purposes at the moment because yeah, yeah. and uh, but I think it's very important to then share them. So yeah, yeah. But I, so I, I think they'd be too they'd be too sort of to sort of answer my own question a little bit. There'd be two conflicting questions that you'd ask. One is what what parts of your data are a useful and b possible to re to represent in the end. So, you know, what do, what would people want if, who were importing via TEI, um, and what what simply can be encoded in that format? Um, and the other, um, no, maybe that is both parts of the question. Um, there was a second part I forgot. No, but I think that uh, like the epigraphic part, the, yeah. what they call the epigraphic annotation, that would be yes. easy and yes. fruitful to yes. to, yes. and also I know that it's possible to annotate also. Uh, Different readings, so yeah. that would be yeah. and the um, the historical and bibliographic and descriptive metadata obviously would be very very useful to put in that format because that's a format that people know how to import from. Yeah. And maybe I don't know. One could think, okay, we export only the consensus annotation. Yeah. I mean, the comment rather than a question. I know I'm curious about this. So, like you, I work with complex scripts. And I'll be a database, all right. 
doesn't use any of the standard amputation systems either. We have our own, but we do export to TEI because people need that. So absolutely, because these things, when these things were created, they weren't created with us in mind. Yeah. And it's actually quite a bad fit a lot of the time. So you do have to make compromises. Yeah. But on the other hand, funding bodies, other projects, all of these things expect the standards mm -hmm. now. Having seen them as outputs rather than as integral is, is, a, is a happy solution to that. Just as a, as a plug based on, yeah. just coming back on, on both of those comments, there is, I believe, planned a meeting in October, if I'm not mistaken, to discuss ways in which Epidoc could be made more friendly to non alphabetic mm -hmm. scripts, um, and ways in which that could work. So, you know, with Egyptologists, cuneiformists, yeah. Mayanists. Um, Etc. So we're coming together to talk about that. So it might be quite might be useful to yes, talk to both of you yeah, yeah. Whether, whether or not October is a possible month for travel. I'm not sure. Where's the meeting? Bonn, I think. Bonn, so far. Bonn, Bonn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bonn. Uh, no, Jeremy Watson. Bonn. I'm Bonn. But, but yeah, I mean, maybe the no, second week of our teaching show or something. But anyway, yeah. we can we can we'll talk more about it. Yeah. Not <laughs> <laughs> very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we thank very good all my time. Thank you.